afternoon, Lana. Welcome to our science lesson today. Uh, our lesson today is uh, from the chapter Properties of Matter. Properties of Matter. And in Properties of Matter, first we are going to do a, a bit of revision of what we covered in class 5. I am aware that in class 5 we covered uh, the states of matter, the states of matter. We first uh, defined what matter is and we said matter is anything that occupies space and has weight or uh, mass. So after defining the word matter, we went ahead and identified the three states of matter depending on, 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 on how they appear. And so in this, we found that we have three states of matter. Number one, we identified solids. Then we have another class, uh, liquids, and also gases. So these are the three states of matter that we looked at in, uh, in class five. In the same, we also looked at their characteristics. The characteristics of these matters, they have different, different characteristics. So, we check the characteristics of these three types of matter. And number one characteristic, or just form a table here, solids, liquids, and gases. Oh, my space is small there. So let me just put it here. The three states of matter, states of matter, there are three. And now we look at the characteristics. Characteristics, so properties of this matter. Number one, we look at solids, and I put them in a table. Then number two, we have liquids. And lastly, we have gases. So, you can briefly say, so liga, so liga, briefly like that. So if you want to know the, uh, the characters of these matters, you simply form a formula. Sometimes some learners find it difficult to remember, but you can form a, a very simple formula, and uh, the formula is very simple. You just say mama, mark, Molar visited 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 on a Sunday. Mamak Mula visited visited on a Sunday. After getting uh, those uh, uh, wordings, you pick the first letters. You pick the first letters. The first letters are M, 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 V, V, and then S. What does that mean? That are uh, in solids, solids are solids have definite mass, definite volume, and definite shape. If you go to number two. Liquids, liquids have definite mass and they have definite volume. And then if you go to gases, gases have definite mass only. They have a definite volume and a definite shape. Now another thing, Lana, you might have discussed is that volume is also called size. So in, in an exam, and especially in KCP exam, you find that most of the time they don't use volume, but they will use size. So where there is V, you put S. So it's all, it can be volume or size. So that's simply what you did in, uh, in class 5. And uh, with that, now we'll be able to begin our lesson having known what is matter. And matter, we say matter is anything that occupies space and has mass or weight. And then it exists in three states, that is solids, liquids, and gases. Then the characteristics. That is, mass, solids are de definite mass, definite volume or size, or definite shape. 
Liquids have definite mass, definite volume or size, and then gases have definite mass. What is not here is indefinite. For example, if you go to liquids, liquids have a definite shape. They don't have a, a specific shape. They occupy the shape of the container they are put in. If you go to gases, you find that they have definite volume or size, and they have indefinite shape. So, Lana, we want to begin now our topic of discussion today. And uh, as I said, in the properties of matter in class 7, I think this is a very new topic to all of us in class 7. So we're going to discuss the following in class 7. Number one, we are going to discuss solids that dissolve in water. Solids that dissolve in water. And that, and that, and that, and those, sorry, those which do not. Solids that dissolve in water and those which do not. Number two, we are also going to discuss liquids that mix. and those that do not. Solids, I mean, uh, means liquids that do not, uh, that mix, and those that do not. Then Roman three, or number three, in this chapter we are also going to discuss magnetic, magnetic, and non, Magnetic materials, magnetic and non magnetic materials, and lastly, the various methods of separating mixtures. Various methods of separating mixtures. After we have formed different mixtures in these three uh, subtopics, we are going to see how we can be able to separate them. Sometimes we form mixtures accidentally. Like for example, you can find yourself mixing um, some sand and uh, with uh, with salt, and maybe you want the salt back. How will you be able to separate that? So we are coming to that uh, towards the end of this subtopic. So let's begin with our first subtopic, which is solids that dissolve in water and those which do not dissolve. So we are going to look at the first subtopic: solids, solids which do, uh, which and those which do not. So that is what we are going to discuss today. And for us to be able to discuss that learner, we need to do an experiment. We need to carry out an experiment so that we can be able to understand some of the terminologies that will be used in this particular subtopic. Solids that dissolve in water and those which do not. So for us to be able to understand how they dissolve, we need to have an experiment. So in our own experiment, we are going to have the materials. We are going to have the materials. And our materials are number one, salt. Number two, a clear glass. Number three, clear water. And number four, a stirring, stirring rod. Instead of stirring rod, we can also use a spoon. Then the procedure will be, number one, we are going to put a small quantity of water, a small quantity of water in a glass, two small quantity, small quantity of water, or just play, put some, some water, just put some water 
in a glass. Number two, we place, we put small quantity of salt, put a small quantity of salt. Number three, we are going to let that salt stand and the salt stand in quotes for a while for a while before stirring. Then number four procedure we are going to observe observe what happens. So these are materials learner and that is the procedure. Put some water in a glass, a clear glass. Number two, put a small quantity of salt in that water. Let the salt stand, meaning that it's going to, to remain at the bottom for a while and then start stirring. Then lastly, observe what happens. So now I'm going to do that for you. I'm going to do that for you as you observe exactly what happens so i'll be having our, our materials here so number one i have my clear glass as you can see very clear and i'm going to add some water in the glass so that is my water is very clear then i'm going to add uh, some salt in that water I'm going to add some salt. I'm adding my salt there. Well, I've added some salt. Let me put in some more. Yes. So I let it stand, meaning that I just leave it like that for some time before I start stirring. So I think it has, it has gone all of it at the bottom. Then from there, I'm going to stir. Gently, I'm going to stir. I'm going, going to use a spoon instead of a, stir, a stirring rod. So I'm going to stir for a while. So I continue stirring just like that. And you're supposed to observe what is happening as I continue to start, Lana. Try to observe what is happening. Continue observing as the teacher demonstrates what you're supposed to do back at home. I continue starting for a while. About three minutes I'll be through with my stirring. So as you continue observing, I want you to check what is going to happen in this particular experiment. Check what is going to happen. So we have finished with our stirring. I want you to look at the water again. You saw the water first, but I just put it in the, the glass. I added salt. I stirred. And now you can be able to see the final water. I'll place it somewhere to settle. I write a few questions that we need to answer so that we can know exactly what happened in our experiment. So I'm going to let it settle as we embark on a few questions that we are going to write here to ensure that uh, we understand what we have just done. And just on this side, I'm going to have 
few diagrams, three of them, to demonstrate exactly what we did. The first diagram, these diagrams will help us to know what is going to happen. That is diagram number one. Then we are going to have a second diagram. I want you to check well. This is water. This is salt. This is water. And this is salt. Call salt granules. Then lastly, we have another diagram here. We have water. So there are things I'm going to write here. This is before starting. Before starting. Diagram 2, that is B. Um, during starting. And diagram 3, after starting. After starting. You need to observe well. So those, those are the three diagrams. First I put the, the salt in the glass. The glass was with water. I continued to, to stir. And then after stirring, that is the glass that you can be able to see. Then we need to answer these questions, Lana. Number one, what happens to the salt granules immediately they are put in the water? What happens? What happens to the salt? Meet the granules immediately. They are put in water. That is question number one. Question number two. What happens to the salt grains as you start? What happens to the salt grains as you start? That's another question. With that question, the final question, what happens to all the salt after you start well? What happens to all the salt after you start, you start well. You start well. Now, as you're going to continue to answer this question, you realize that there are certain things that you're going to see in our, in our diagram. So can you be able to answer question number one? Now, question number one is, what happens to the salt granules immediately they are put in the water? And the answer you might have uh, discussed with your friend back at home is that uh, the, uh, the salt granules are going to settle at the bottom of the glass, as you can be able to see. They are here. Once we place them inside, they settle here, at the bottom of the glass. So that is what we have been able to observe, Lana. Number two, what happens to the salt grains as you start? We are here starting. So what are we, are we seeing here? I want you to see, to check the, amount, the, the number of uh, uh, granules here. If you can count them, they are, they are more here, almost half. I want you to compare this number of uh, granules, salt granules, and this one, and tell me what you can be able to notice. You notice that these are very few, meaning that these granules started disappearing. Yeah? Disappearing in quotes. They started disappearing. If you look here, there are many. Here, they continue to decrease in number. And that will tell us something. And then, in our last question, 
What happens to all the salt after you start well? Look at this diagram here. Here we have many granules. Here we have very few granules remaining. Here we don't have any. Meaning that these granules of salt have disappeared in the water. These granules have disappeared in the water. I want you, Lana, to be able to see this and tell me whether it's true that you can't be able to see the granules. The granules that we put in this water, are we able to see them? And the answer will be no. Meaning that the granules have just disappeared in this water. There is a reason why they disappeared in that water. So we have found that once we place salt here, or even sugar, and you stir, this can easily set, uh, I mean, uh, disappear in the water, and eventually you have a very uniform solution like this, where you can't be able to find the solid granules of, uh, of, of, uh, of salt or sugar. So that is exactly what happened in Lana. And um, in this now, we are going to see exactly what is uh, the, the, the conclusion. What can we be able to say? If we put some salt in a glass, we pour some water, and now we can't be able to see them after stirring. There is a reason why we can't be able to see. So when salt or sugar is mixed with water and stirred, the granules disappears. So that aspect of disappearing, that aspect of disappearing, the, the grass, uh, uh, salt, uh, granules dis, dis, I mean, disappeared in the water. We call that dissolving. That is simply dissolving. So dissolving is the ability of, uh, ability of uh, solute to disappear in water. The ability of solute, I'm going to explain what solute, to disappear. Disappear in water. Disappear completely in water. Now, whatever we get there, this solution we have gotten here, this complete mixture, the salt and water mixed completely, leaving no granules here. What we get here is what we call a solution. A solution. So after dissolving, we get something we call a solution. And in our case here, the solution because of salt is going to be salt solution. We are going to get a salt solution. A salt solution. So we're going to get a salt solution because what we put in the salt, I mean in the water was salt. So that was that was was formed by the salt plus water is a solution. The complete mixture of the salt granules and water formed a solution. And what happened there was dissolving. So Lana, we need also to, to explain something else we call a solute. What is that solute? And solute is simply a solid that dissolves. That dissolves in a solvent. Solute is a solid that dissolves in a solvent, meaning that we are going also to define what, define what is solvent. And solvent, solvent in this case is simply a liquid, a liquid in which a solute dissolves. A liquid in which a solute dissolves is what we call a solvent. In our experiment here, I am going to write a few things. I am going to write these particular three things. Number one, I'm going to have a solute plus a solvent. And we said when we take a solute, we add to a solvent. What we are going to get here is a solution. So, Lana, in our experiment, solutes, we said they are solids that dissolve in a solvent. So, what was our solid? Our solid was salt. 
So in this case, we are going to put salt there. Under solute. So our, 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 our solid was, was salt, and that salt is known as solute. Again, we are going to identify the solvent. And what is a solvent? We go back to our definition. Solvent is a liquid in which a solute dissolves. A liquid in which a solute dissolves. So which solid was that? Salt. Dissolved in what? Water. So the water becomes, becomes a, a, a solvent. And in that case, we will get a solution. And I, mentioned, I just mentioned the solution here. The solution will be determined by what we pl place inside the water. If we place sugar, it's going to be a sugar solution. If we put salt, it's going to be a salt solution. So in our experiment here, we just added salt, and this was going to become a salt solution. So Lana, I think you can be able to identify those things well, there are very, very key and important points that we need to, to, to mark. Number one, what is dissolving? The ability of a solute to disappear in water, to dissolve in water. And then solution, what, is, what they form is called a solution. And the solution will be named according to the solute that was placed in that particular uh, solvent. Then we came and defined what a solute is. And a solute, we say, is that solid that you add to the water and then it starts stirring. That solid is known as, uh, I mean, uh, uh, that solid is going to be called a solute. So in our own case, this, this salt. Then solvent is a water, a liquid in which the sol solid is going to dissolve. So we get that equation like that. In our own uh, second example, we can have an example of... Uh, Sugar being here, so sugar becomes the solute. You're going to add it to water, and the solution we are going to get in this case is a sugar solution. We are going to have a sugar solution. So I'm saying we we'll name the solution according to the solute that we put in the solvent. So now that is where we are. As of now, that we have defined what a solute is, sorry, what a solvent is and what a solution is. Those are three are very, very important. So, the last, almost the last thing I'm going to mention when a substance. When a substance dissolves in water, when a substance dissolves in water to form a solution, my solution is said to be soluble. Soluble. I want to mark that word very well, that when a substance dissolves in water to form a solution, that substance is said to be soluble. So in our case here, we have some soluble, so, soluble substances. And what are these? You have just mentioned two, salt and sugar. We have so many other uh, soluble substances. I can talk about glucose, which is also sugar. Glucose is also there because it's in finer, finer granules. So all of these disappear in water. And we say these materials, these substances are soluble. So sugar, salt, and glucose are soluble in water. Remember, our subtopic is looking at those uh, materials that are, um, can be able to mix with, with, uh, with water. Number two. Thing about solubility, we are going to discuss is um, solubility itself. What is solubility? Someone can tell you to define what solubility is, and this is the ability to dissolve. Is the ability is the ability to dissolve. So, 
Thought has the ability to resolve, and we call that solubility. The ability to resolve is what we call solubility. So, Lana, remember where we started in defining what matter is, the states of matter, and I showed how to identify the state of matter and their characteristics. Then we, we came to those substances that dissolve in water. We have defined just what a solute is, what a solution is, and what a solvent is. Just to remind you, a solvent is a liquid in which a, sol a solute dissolves. Then we have a solute is a solid that dissolves in a solvent, and if both are going to dissolve, I mean, to dissolve it's going, the one is going to dissolve the other, then they form a solution according to the solute that was put there. Then of course we have said those things that dissolve in, a, in, a, in water are called, are said to be soluble and the ability of those materials to be able to dissolve is what we call solubility. So after that end learner, we'll be able to continue later in our next discussion and we'll be looking at um, um, some uh, liquids that mix and those which do not mix. So till another time, stay at home, stay safe. Let's meet again in the next lesson. Thank you.